From the Hammond Health Club in the heart of Inwood, New York City, welcome to Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes who make their home in what we affectionately call Upstate Manhattan. I'm your host, Aaron Sims, and today we welcome Zafi Dimitropol Danhel, Artistic Director of People's Theater Project. Rooted in Upper Manhattan, the People's Theater Project is a social justice arts organization that creates ensemble-based theater with and for immigrant communities to develop the next generation of diverse, socially engaged artists and leaders. Its programming consists of the PTP Company, a multi-generational, multilingual, New York City-based touring company composed entirely of Latinx, Black, and immigrants of artists of color. The PTP Academy, a multi-year theater and social justice leadership program of Manhattan dedicated to the holistic development of immigrant youth and youth of color, and PTP Partnerships, which teaching artists collaborate with 16 to 18 elementary, middle and high schoolers, primarily in Upper Manhattan, to provide student-centered, culturally sustaining, and experiential theater curricula. The Feria de Mitropolo del Angel is a Greek-Mexican performer and director. She has studied political science and public administration at the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens and acting at the Greek art theater Paralos Kuhn. In 2017, she graduated from the MFA program in physical theater at Del Art International in California and is currently the artist director of People's Theater Project. We're going to talk about her work and all the great things she's doing at PTP and what PTP has brought uptown and the educational arts scene. But first, we welcome you, Zafi, to In What Works On Air. It's so good to have you here today. So good to be here. Thank you for having me. Sure thing. How are you? I am great. It's a, it's a nice day here in New York City. So I'm happy. It's great to be out. People are doing things again. The city's opened up a little bit. Finally, yes. We need it. We need it, particularly in our line of work. Absolutely, yes. I, I, I do feel that artists, not only in New York City, but all over the world, have kind of taken the shortest end of the stick. Um, we've waited the longest to be back doing our work, and yeah. I think it's time. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's start at the beginning of, well, because everyone has a good origin story, I think. Um, how did you find your way from Mexico, Greece, California, to Northern Manhattan and PTP? I know, I know. I, I often um, say that I've been an immigrant my whole life, almost as if it's my job, because <laughs> I was born in Mexico, um, I went to school a little bit there. We left, we emigrated to Greece because my parents were seeking a better future for their kids. I graduated uh, university, both of the universities I attended in Athens. And then the financial crisis hit um, and it was really bad. And it's actually up to this day, really you know, Greece is struggling a lot. So I decided that I had to leave. Um, I moved to Belgium first where I worked a little bit as a performer. And then I wanted to do my master's. So I found this amazing program in California. It's a very unique, robust uh, physical theater program that is very rare in, in thinking of physical theater schools all over the world. There are not so many. So I went there. Um, and then I moved to New York on my own without knowing anyone. Um, and I found People's Theater Project after a very extensive research on different uh, theater organizations all over, all over town. And I was like, this is the place for me. Esa va a ser mi casa. When I read their, their mission and when I saw, I actually saw um, Mina on a YouTube video two years before I moved to New York City. So I remembered her and I remember how vibrant and how just like powerhouse she was in that video. So when I came, I applied and I started as a teaching artist first before uh, transitioning to and ad joining the admin team and, and um, becoming the artistic director. You're learning from the ground up, from within, right? Exactly. That's the best way. Yeah, exactly. Well, as you mentioned, uh, Mino and Laura and Bob Braswell, uh, Great people, founded People's <laughs> Theater Project and grew it into what is now a 12-year-old company. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, they couldn't be here with us today to give us the whole, their origin story. Uh, but can you speak to how much of uh, the original tension remains intact with the company uh, from those grassroots days to where it is now and maybe how it's evolved and changed? Yeah, that's a great question. So I will share a little bit of the story that I've heard from them because it's my favorite part. Um, when I asked, uh, I think I asked in my interview, when I did the interview to join as an admin person, um, I asked what was the story behind the organization and, you know, Mino 
told me, you know, this was my thesis when I did my master's. Um, and then she actually told me that they went out with Bob in the streets of Washington Heights and Inwood, and they interviewed people, the people of la comunidad, the people of the community. And they were like, if we were doing a play, would you be interested in being part of it? Like theater, costume, saying lines. And that was kind of a, a, a big aha moment because they got so many, yes. Of course, yes. Like, I love acting. I love dancing. It's such a big part of our Latino community also, like the, the movement and the rhythm and the passion. So um, I love that part of the story. And I can tell that 12 years after, this has not changed at all. Like, we have grown a lot. We have our own studio now. Uh, we make, we produce shows. Um, but the community is always in the center. So that's why we chose to do ensemble-based theater and device theater. So we hear the stories of the people and of our community. Okay, well, that's a great answer because I think theater um, is of the community. It should be of a community. And that's how it came. That's how it came about. Um, and that's how it's supported. So it's very indicative in your mission and what you guys do here in North Manhattan. So we've covered the inception to what is a, now a thriving community-based organization. And let's talk now, the work continues. Mm -hmm. uh, PTP continues to be a powerful platform for the voice of immigrants and people of color. Um, you are now one at the artistic helm as an admin, as you say. So what is your vision here now and going into its second decade? What is my vision? Um, so I, I think our you know, me and Bob did for 10 years their residency programs in the schools, mostly in District 10, but also in the South Bronx mm -hmm. and, and some of them in, in East Harlem as well. Um, we recently, in 2018, launched the professional company, which is the first branch of our, of our work that you um, mentioned before. And um, we also transitioned three years ago our public programs, what was known as the community comes to PTP to do acting classes and social justice classes into a multi-year robust academic program that is called the PTP Academy. That's, that is a six-year track program where middle and high school students audition to get in and it's scholarship based. So all of our programs, we make sure that the community will be able to have access to them as well as our shows, right? That's why either there's no ticket to come and watch our shows or there is um, a sliding scale or affordable affordable prices in our tickets. So I would say that my vision is to continue growing the academy, uh, to continue growing the company, growing our presence. And I really, really think that once we're done with <laughs> this phase of the world, um, we want to go back to that starting story. So you know, maybe start doing shows in a storefront, in storefronts here in our in our community, finding what is our physical space. Mm -hmm in our community. We love our studio, we love our neighbors, sure. but it is a, a, an office space and you know, we're a theater people, we're loud. Sometimes they, they come very gently always. We love them and they <laughs> knock on the door and they're like, you guys stomp your feet a lot. And we're like, we know. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> um, Wait till we start singing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, so, yeah. I think that's tremendous uh, ideas to move forward and I wholeheartedly hope you achieve those and uh, and Thank why you. not, right? Um, so could you talk a little bit about um, with the empowerment of young people and you have the academy which is more, um, uh, let's say, educational based, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I also want people to know about, I don't think people, because I think everyone knows PTP traditionally from as an educational theater company right. um, or an educational company that does produce theater, right. immigrant based, social justice based mm -hmm. theater. Um, to empower young people. But I don't think people know a lot about the non-union company of the Soul and the Luna mm -hmm. and ensembles. Mm -hmm, Would you mm -hmm. please talk about that? Because I think that's a really interesting, it's a touring company, right? Yes, it is a touring company. Yeah, so um, our development director, Aya Hayasi, has made a beautiful visual of this. Our programs work in a cycle. So basically, you get to know People's Theater Project as a young person if you attend one of the public schools in, a, in our neighborhood then you get hooked, you're like, oh, I wanna do more of this. Um, you audition, you enter the academy, and then when you graduate from the academy, you join Luna Ensemble, which is your first professional paid uh, touring experience as an actor after you've gone through this robust educational program. Soul Ensemble has the, I would say, more established 
immigrant and, and artists of color that create theater, that a lot of them are the teaching artists at the academy and the schools. So when the new production every year is ready, then it tours in the schools, you as a student see Miss Angie on stage and you go like, oh my goodness, that's my teacher and that's what we're trying to, to do in our classroom. Uh, we also tour in a lot of cultural venues, museums, um, other theaters, always having in mind to reach as many community, immigrant communities as we can uh, within New York City. Hopefully, that's another part of my vision, moving outside of the city, the state. Well, you're already touring it, so you have a template <laughs> for touring, so just yep. widen it right. Um, well, I think that's really great. I think it's, uh, I can't tell you how valuable um, it is, listeners, for an actor to get their first job, first, mm. first mm. paying job. There's a lot of validation in that. And uh, particularly coming from a program that they came up with that's saying they want to reinvest in them as a, as a performer. I think that's incredibly rewarding. So kudos to you all for development of that program. And also I think too, it's, I, I really love the idea of seeing students, seeing their, their mentors on stage and, um, and seeing them in a different light because obviously it's a different relationship. The student teacher relationship is a different Absolutely. relationship than audience uh, performer relationship. Absolutely. And if I, if I may say one specific example, because sometimes, you know, um, I'd like to give a tangible example of why it makes a difference. Um, a big part of the work that we do is in the educational component is celebrating ourselves. Uh, getting to know our identities, the intersectionality of our identities, right? So when our, our students, um, a lot of them, they have recently arrived in the country and they're still, you know, learning the language, they would be encouraged by a PTP teaching artist, let's say your lines in whatever language you want to speak at this very moment. Because there's so much pressure from society and from the systems in place um, to quote-unquote assimilate, a lot of the students are very hesitant. They don't want to be the one student that does not try to speak in English or, or chooses another language. When we take those shows and they see on stage people from different ages um, representing different countries in the world and speaking in their native languages proudly and beautifully and seeing that it doesn't matter if you don't speak Farsi. It doesn't matter if you don't speak Mandarin. It doesn't matter if you don't speak Spanish. If you're in tune with yourself and present in the moment, you'll get what these people are talking about. You'll, you'll get the essence. Then we see that. The next day in the classroom, suddenly the student goes, yo le quiero decir en español. Like, I'm going to do it. Or any other language that is spoken um, from, from the student body. So I, I love when that happens. And I think it's definitely worth it doing this type of work. Well, I, I think it's really interesting too, like, um, that type of work you said transcending and going into a touring company um there's a lot of talk about representation in theater right mm -hmm. now uh and having it turn into uh, a company that tours outside uh do you have any aspirations for um the company to be a professional company kind of a union-based company so when so so when that's the next step right it's like it's, like it's being paid is one thing that becoming a union actor is yep. the, is kind of like the end of the validation moment yeah. for people to have a career, so to speak. So I was curious if you have, and it's fine if they don't, because there's plenty of non-union companies out there who do great work. So I was yeah. curious if you have aspirations for that. Actually, thank you so much for asking this question, because if you would have asked me this question five months ago, I would have given a different <laughs> response. We've been wanting for a long time to be unionized, and the reason we couldn't, it was because up until, I think it was a month ago or two months ago, if you were not a holder of a green card or a citizen, you could not enter Actors' Equity Association. Wow. And so thinking of what is the mission of our organization, our values, our priority was to work with immigrants of color in this country. So we wouldn't jeopardize that in order for us to be considered by our funders or society professional. We were like, we know we're professionals. Right. We do the work. Um, but now, good news, and kudos to, to, to all of the people who fought really hard and uh, the equity finally listened. I think this ch changed recently. No, I don't think. I know it changed recently a month they ago. They just changed their membership, yes. Yes. So um, now people who are on an O-1 visa, which is a very, very common popular... I, I'm on that visa recently, um, uh, just renew, recently renewed mine. They can join Actors' Equity Association. So we will now enter in a, cons a different type of thinking and consideration and conversations with equity to see what that means, what type of contracts, 
Um, yeah. Cool. That's great. I think that's fantastic. There's plenty of theater for young audience contracts out there. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, um, if that is a again, direction you want to go yes. in, but it seems like there's no reason why you can't now. Yeah. No. Absolutely no reason to not. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so uh, I I would you I love you mentioned earlier like you have specific in-person stories of examples. So um, beyond, uh, if you, could you share any stories of students that have come out of PTP's programs that have later embarked on professional artistic careers or down the path of, of being a leader for social justice? Because it's so true to the mission. So I just would love to hear if you have any great stories to share with our community about that. Oh my goodness, now I have to choose because there are so many. I will say... Well, you, you, love, you love them all equally, that's yes, fine. Yes, yes, I love so them all equally. Not, not, not accusing you of that. Okay, good. Um, I would say that, I mean, the big success story is uh, of one of our students who met Mino when she was attending Harbor Heights, which was a, it is a middle school specific for um, new immigrants in the country. And um, she usually, she often says, like, when I met Mino, I barely spoke English. And I took the PTP class and then joined what was then known as public programs, the Academy Now. Um, and then went into college, did finance, and now is in our board. She's the youngest board member That's of amazing. the Theater Project. Wow. Yes. And during her time at, at, in college, like, she was extremely active in organizing affinity groups um, in terms of the social justice aspect of, of the work, um, even though she was studying numbers and, and finance and governance. That's awesome. And all of those interesting things. <laughs> That's a great story. That's a yep. really great story. Well, as Northern Manhattan continues to evolve and people continue to evolve within a community, um, we're all very aware, well up here that you know there's developments happening. Mm -hmm. um, gentrification has its positive and negative connotations, depending who you talk to and which conversation you're having. Um, but it obviously affects the pool of of, of artists up here. Mm -hmm. um, and I, in what artworks, we are very much aware as we champion local artists. Um, there's a lot of people who have moved away mm -hmm. or are worried about their place in the community mm -hmm. and just their ability to raise their children in a community that um, they want to see uh, support them. Uh, so I, it's, it is, you're right, it's been a horrible year and a half of changes and things like that. And then we're also concerned about the property values and how mm -hmm. um, the new developments are going to happen in northern Manhattan. Since PTP is based in Inwood um, in northern Manhattan, I would love to hear your voice in this conversation of how you all are, are, are dealing with um, this story. Not that, not that you have a crystal ball or anything yeah. like that. Um, but uh, it's because uh, you know, since you do draw, like I said, community t district ten and everything mm -hmm, else, like mm -hmm. it's here. So uh, how is that affecting you guys as well moving forward? I mean, this is definitely a topic that uh, we often. It is a big topic of discussion amongst us and and with our community. Uh, we recently also formed uh, during the pandemic. We did that. We formed an anti-oppressive committee within People's Theater Project that has um, representation from all of the different pools of people that are involved in PTP. So it has a board right. member, admin people, uh, parents from, the, from students, actors, uh, directors, and so on. And this is definitely a big topic that AOC discusses um, as well. For us, I really, what, what it really comes down to is us being completely true to our mission and our values People's Theater Project has always been a space for the community to organize mm -hmm. from marches to conversations to advocate to lobbying. Mino has gone with our students uh, multiple times uh, to Albany to lobby with the young people about the arts and about housing and about immigration and about all of those topics that affect directly our community. Um, and by community, I don't just mean the residents of Inwood and Washington Heights who obviously come for us first, but PTP is part of the community. Our employees, all of us, uh, our saying. students. It's ingrained here. Exactly. Um, so we're not going anywhere, <laughs> People's Theater Project. We're going to continue to fight for um, what, what the community needs and wants and hear the community. And uh, for us being artists and using art as the tool for advocacy, we will continue to push for whatever changes happen for always the community to be considered and um, have a space to be creative and and um, chant 
and organize together and advocate. And fight for inclusivity, right? Exactly. Exactly. Love it. Uh, I also have a tangible example that I say, I say this with a lot of pride because the pandemic, you know, it, was, it is still, but especially prior to the vaccine when we were still very much into the unknown. Um, and last summer, PTP was one of the main organizers of the Children's Black Lives Matter March that, that happened. And we had more than 1,000 community members join, most of whom were young people. Um, and it was one of the marches that I participated in and I really, really felt the hope. Um, and we did that in the midst of all of the uncertainty and the, we don't even know what's right. going on. Like, is it safe to be in person? But we found a way to do it. Everyone stayed safe. And I think that's a great example of how we will, uh, continue to prioritize our community in no matter what happens. That's a great example. Well, I, I cause I, I see it coming down the line too, and it is going to be a fight, but I think it's a fight worth having for sure. Absolutely, yes. Because we're here and we're not going anywhere. I agree. And yes, I was going to say we have each other also. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, PTP knows we take a big pride on, on being in community with also all of the other amazing organizations that exist uptown. And, you know, this is familia es lo que, <laughs> lo, que el más, lo más importante. <laughs> Absolutely. So. I have a personal question for you, but it's professional as well. So because you're doing all this programming, when's the next time you're going to direct or perform? Oh, I'm actually directing the, the next production that is premiering September. See? <laughs> Great segue. You're welcome. <laughs> um, yes. So we have, so when we formed the company in 2018, we started this quest to create um, a theatrical trilogy investigating and celebrating the immigrant experience. Uh, we took a pause during the pandemic for the obvious reasons, but we're now back. And the third part of this trilogy is called Doña Mañana, uh, Miss Tomorrow in Spanish. Um, and it is about, um, it's a sequel of the part two, which was Somos Mas. And in Somos Mas, we met six immigrants that they lived in a dystopian nation and they united in secret to spark a joyful revolution. Doña Mañana follows the journey of those six immigrants into the first Afro-Latina Presidente of this formerly dystopian nation who is trying to not fall into the traps of the oppressive systems that have been previous for um, and bring true liberation to the people of this nation. So the premiere is the weekend of September 17th, so 17th, 18th, 19th, four shows in total at the Riverside Theater, uh, which is inside Riverside Church, an historical church of, of our upper Manhattan. And um, yeah, you should all go into our website because there's tickets available um, and we're super excited. I'm directing this show. It is still ensemble based. So the actors are very much uh, cultivating the material, but um, it's looking really good so far. So I'm excited to share with, with the people. And what is the website people can go to? Uh, PTP.nyc. Perfect. So you have your instructions, people. <laughs> yes. Well, Safi, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to be with me here today on What Artworks On Air. Thank you so much, Aaron. You sure, sure thing. Um, so, this is In What Artworks On Air. We are uh, just enjoyed Zafi at this Artist Spotlight episode, and it's where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes who make their home here at Upper Manhattan. If you have a moment, please show us some love right now by rating and reviewing this podcast and Apple Podcasts. It really helps. Many thanks to Hanneman Health Club here at 219 Sherman Avenue in Inwood for hosting us and to HeightSites.com for local uptown promotional support. Be sure to follow us on social media at Inwood Artworks to keep up with all that we do, including the Inwood Film Festival, Filmworks Al Fresco, pop-up art galleries, live performances, and so much more. You can support On Air and all of our programming by making a tax-free donation at InwoodArtworks.nyc backslash donate. This program is supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with City Council. From the top of Manhattan and the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Aaron Sims for Inwood Artworks On Air.